Hey everyone, it's Peter from Rock Daydream Nation and I've got a special um, panel event today. Um, we're going to be ranking the top five police songs. So um, Grant Arthur, John Clouser and Reed Little, g'day. 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 <laughs> Hello. G'day mate. G'day mate. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to rank the police songs in order from five to one, and we're going to go round robin. So everyone sort of starts with their fifth round robin, go to the fourth and take it from there. So I think what we'll do is we'll go Grant, John, Reed, me, and then we'll just go round robin. And at the end, I'm going to tally it up and let everyone know what the number one police song was. So take it away, Grant. All number right. five. I don't know if you'll get any of mine because we'll see. Uh, writing my it down. Fifth one, all right <laughs> my fifth one my fifth favorite is wrapped around your finger which was the uh, second uk single from police's album synchronicity in 1983 there you go in britain it reached number seven and it reached number eight on the billboard chart in the states um what i like about this song i like q pageant's production it's very clean um atmospheric the instrumentation for this song is kind of uh sparse but it's got a killer chorus and greek mythology because everyone needs greek mythology in a song um and basically wrapped around your fingers you know about power dynamics and relationships and it has one of the best lines in a police song that i like um i will turn your face alabaster when you find your servant is your master love that line because it's well Find your servant as your master, kind of how it works. Um, the drums are great. Production's great, like I said. It's my fifth favorite. I love it. Good choice. Thanks, Grant. John. Sure. Okay, so I'm my my choices are probably gonna be a little contrarian. I had to give them a plug. So I kind of just did a dumpster dive on the on the discography because I'm not really familiar with the first three albums as much. Mm -hmm. um, so I just lit this last week or so, I have just plugged myself into the first three. And uh, so my number five is actually going to be next to you from Outlandus de Amour. I just love that. That in your face, punk meets kind of soul with sting's voice kind of thing and it just it just has this kind of attitude and it's just like we are here <laughs> and i just i just really liked it about that uh that song so i like the i like the the chorus i thought everything was a great song and um i really yeah i thought it was a great introduction to the band so mm -hmm. i'm going with next to you good yeah, choice great track yeah that's a good track read number five all right. And uh, before I get to my song, uh, I like to always put things in context uh, much. We were chatting before the show started. Grant and I apparently started listening to the police about the same time. I literally remember the first police song I ever heard, which was do 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 da 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 at a kid's birthday party when I was in the ninth grade. And I don't remember anything else about that, but I remember hearing that song. So it obviously made an impression. Um, and then where I knew the police was from MTV. Um, so I knew all of their songs for which they had videos and there were a lot of them. Um, and it wasn't until very recently that I really got into the full albums. And to me, you know, the police are very much a, a band of yin and yang. They've got great pop songs and they've got this really deep arty rock um, that kind of not so peacefully coexists sometime. Uh, and I, tend to prefer the pop songs just going to throw that out there so my first uh, my number five track is can't stand losing you um and it's not only a great pop song it does what i think the police do better than anybody except david bowie and that is they take a beautiful pop song and absolutely turn it on its head because this wonderful upbeat kind of reggae inspired happy dance song is about how much this guy wants to kill himself because his girlfriend's left him and you know he's got that line in there that it's all her fault and she'll be sorry when he's gone 
I mean, that is really dark material for this wonderful, happy song. Uh, and I love that about the police. They weren't just going to give you straight up pop songs. They were going to do something weird with it. So can't stand losing you. Great track. Good song. Good track. Number five. That's great. Um, my number five is Every Breath You Take. Um, I think is a good song is a good song. And um, look, it's probably... Um, the most popular police song of all time. Um, I did some research on the song. It is actually the most played song on radio worldwide. It comprises 25% of um, Sting's royalties. So it's a nice little money earner, wow. that song. I didn't know um, that. One okay. song, 25% of his royalties I believe it. tick over with that, that particular song. Again, I think this taps into what Reed was saying about a, a pop confection song, but if you look at the lyrics, they are much darker. And um, it really scratches my head where a lot of people have used this um, song at weddings or Valentine's Day. When you, uh, The premise of this song is about a stalker or somebody that's got a very obsessive relationship. So um, I, I think that people need to sort of analyse the lyrics a little bit more. Um, I think musically it's beautifully arranged. There's a lot of drama. There's a, a you know, between the, the chorus and the verse, there's just this sort of crescendo and then it goes back to where it was. There's, there's all these little mini dramas within the song. I think it's a, it's a perfect pop song. Um, it's one of their, my favourite police songs and it's my number five, Every Breath You Take. Beautiful. All right, Grant. All right, my number four. Is, is off Zanyata Mandata. Here we go. Um, when the world is running down, you can make the best of what's still around. And that is, I believe, that is the third track on side one. In fact, Zanyata Mandato, I think, is when the police actually came into their, how do I want to put it? Um, came into their own. I think the album has, a, it has a lot of filler on it, but there's something about the tone of the record and just the production. It's not the best production, but there's just something about it. Um, Nigel Gray was the pr producer engineer. Um, it's got great flanger from Andy Summers. I mean, everything in this song you can tell is the police. Everybody stands out. Everyone's an individual, but when they blend together, it's just incredible. Stuart Copeland's drumming. I mean, there, it's just a wonderful track. And that whole thing where it segues into Driven to Tears, it's just perfect. I mean, the, the way that whole side starts out, it's one of my favorite sides on a police album ever. But yeah, that's my number four. No, oh, that's a good track. And um like Stuart Copeland is a drama. He's just phenomenal. Um, yeah, he's really great on this yeah. one. I mean, police are the ultimate power trio, aren't they? And mm -hmm. um, I think the the drumming, um, the bass lines, and even Andy Summers' tasteful guitar licks, it just all combines. And for a three-piece, they just have such a big, powerful sound. It's, right. it's immense. I mean, even the songs on Zanyata that are kind of filler, even those tracks are still great compelling yeah but i i love it yeah no that's good good choice john okay so more on stuart stuart copeland's uh drumming so i'm going from regatta de blanc uh no time this time uh mm -hmm. just a fast-paced tune crisp stuart copeland drumming man I'm, I'm listening to these albums and i'm just like wow yeah, he's a machine. That's that like the big thing that I noticed was, was Stuart Copeland's drumming. I never thought of just how good of a drummer he really is. It's just amazing listening to those things. It's just this nice, crisp, clean drum sound. It just, again, like you, like you guys said, the three of them as a three-piece, they just had this great big sound. But, man, his drum sounds just amazing. But, uh, yeah, that I, 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 a great album closure. You know, I go from the the album opener of Outlandos, the album closer of Regatta de Blanc. But yeah, that's a 
that would be i i really like that one that was a that one was a good one yeah, um, if you like take neil uh take um Stuart copeland out of the police and just have him play you could tell that's him just mm-hmm. like neil peart you take right. neil out of rush he would stick out and that's he's just a sign of a true musician this special person yep and he's a pretty tidy soundtrack um, composer. I've got mm-hmm. a few of his soundtracks like um, Rumblefish. Um, definitely, uh, yeah, worth checking out. But, about um, that. And if, if it, does, does anybody here have the Clark Kent stuff? No. You know, TV Kent show? It? No. No. Stuart it's... Copeland, when they got signed and they did Zane, when they did uh, Outlanders Do More, uh, he put out like an EP that's just all Stuart Copeland playing everything. He wrote all the songs, does the vocals. And it was like kind of an alter ego kind of guy. So you didn't really mm-hmm. know who it was, but there was a compilation that IRS put out, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Now it it's pretty expensive. It's like 50 bucks a CD if you can find it. But I'd recommend, I don't know if it's on Spotify or anything, but just look up Clark Kent with the K and it's great stuff. I mean, you know, uh, what's the track on Regatta de Blanc, uh, Stuart Copeland track in Regatta de Blanc? Um, oh, crap. Um, on Any Other Day? The Clark Kent stuff sounds a lot like that. It's very similar. Yeah. Very unusual rhythms. He And he can turn rhythms at a drop of a hat. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I think he'd be quite challenging live. Because I, if he if he had the uh, if he was a bit cranky with Sting and the rest of the guys, he could just change the rhythm up, and the guys would you know be oh, <laughs> be thrown out a little bit. Um, but I can tell you, he is a hard hitting drummer. Um, I was watching a music uh, movie called uh, um, A Music War, and it was all the greatest mm-hmm. new wave um, sort of Great acts. Movie. Yeah, um, and worth checking out. And you just see all his uh, drum kit is wobbling because he's hitting the drum so hard. <laughs> it's just, he's just and a phenomenal he, drummer. He does that, that jazz hand. He holds it like a jazz drummer. Yeah. Was, yeah. Similar to Charlie Watt, you know, yeah. got the, no, good choice. Good choice. Yeah. Reed, what's your choice for number four? Okay. So this song, believe it or not, I heard it for the first time last week and it instantly made me go you know what that's got to go into my top five so uh coming into the police from the mtv era or much later in life it's easy to forget that they started as a punk band kind of out of necessity because that's what could get signed in london at the time and uh andy summers is 10 years older than the other guys you know when they were making albums in the 70s he was in his 30s He tried out for the Rolling Stones at one time. Uh, So he's been around the block and I can't imagine animals. Yes, exactly. I I can't imagine being on stage while some little punk, literal punk is spitting on me while I'm playing. Um, You you know, in England, you had some weird culture back in the seventies, man. That's all I'm saying. But Despite all of that, the police did punk as well as any punk band ever. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm not a collector of singles, so I don't get like B-sides and stuff unless they get put out in a compilation. And I bought a police box set that has this compilation. I had to look it up called Flexible Strategies that has all of these old B-sides on it. And on it is a track called Landlord. And if you've never heard this song, track it down. It is the fastest, most energetic thing the police ever played. It is straight up punk, played better than the vast majority of punk bands. Now, some punk bands could play, but punk, by definition, was anti-virtuosic. So you didn't get great playing in a lot of punk bands. And despite its overt punkness, it still has those amazing police lyrics it's about the problem of homelessness in, uh, in London and uh, how people buy up, the, uh, buy up the property and have no morals and won't let people live in it. And his, his repeated chorus is, uh, I ain't moving till the bailiff comes. I've got no weapon going to get me some. 
I mean, it's really biting uh, and just an absolutely fantastic song. And to think that all of that came out, you know, pre-1980 is just amazing. Uh, and honestly, I could listen to an entire album of that and I'd have been perfectly satisfied, but it is not in the over of the rest of the police. So that was kind of their their earliest material. But, oh, it's such a good song. I encourage anybody to go find it. Good choice. Yeah. Good also, choice. That, I'll have to listen to that. Absolutely. Well, if you're interested in all that stuff, you can. It's relatively cheap is the police message in the box box set. It's got all the 45s, all the B-sides in it. It's a four right. CD set. And now, I mean, you can pick it up. I've seen it used for like 20 bucks. Right. I think I mean, that may be the one I bought, Grant. Did that, yeah, um, how long ago did that come Yes. Out? Uh, yeah, uh, 2015, early, right. 2018. Yeah. I'll check I mean, that it's, out. it's relatively recent. No, okay. this is even older. Right. So oh, if I could it? get up, oh. if the dog wasn't sitting on my lap, I could go get it. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. But anyway... Uh, it's a great box set. As well, no, I'll having. definitely check that one out. It's a good one. Yeah, Landlord, fantastic song. Fantastic. Okay. Good, good pick. Radio. Um, so my number four pick is "Spirits in a Material World" off the Ghost in the Machine album, and I can tell you that song is just like ear candy. It's been in my head all week. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. I like the arrangements, the little synth stabs, the, the really sort of weird um, string. It's sort of like a little bit sort of discorded um, string sounds and the bass playing. So we just talked about Stuart Copeland's drumming. Sting is a really fine bass player and he's in the Paul McCartney mode where the bass is brought up in the mix and he's just bubbling it all. Um, and in this song, the bass lines are really complicated. You can't even hear that. You can't even work out the the downbeat. So it's it's a really interesting arrangement. The lyrics are political. Uh, they're interesting. They're compelling. But the whole arrangement of this song is um, it's it's a really fine song off the Ghosts and Machines, and that's my number four pick. It's a great pick. Right, uh, mine. Number three. Sorry. My number three is. Yet another one off of Zanyata Mandata. And I'm going with Driven to Tears, which follows up the previous track. And this is another powerhouse for Stuart Copeland. Um, and this is probably one of the best Andy Summers tracks because it's got that weird, crazy kind of, I almost want to say psychedelic eight bar guitar solo in the middle of it. That's just kind of out of this world, which you wouldn't even think of that solo that would even be in this type of song but it fits um and then you know of course he's got his flange guitar and the digital delay i mean his soundscapes that's what i'm going to call them they're just incredible and especially on this album um and peter you mentioned before erg a music war when that movie yeah. opens up that's what they're playing is driven to tears yes what they open up with incredible yeah. They open and um, I think they close the movie too with um, Feel So Lonely. Oh, that's from memory, but anyway. Yeah. yeah, but that movie, just the energy. And if you look online at any police performances like from that era, they were just out of control. I mean, they're all kind of sloppy because you, I don't think they ever practiced or anything, but yeah. they're just, there's so much energy. I mean, even when they're not, when they were probably playing punk rock, I haven't seen any footage of that. But, you know, like off uh, the first album or like if they played Landlord or any of that, I'd like to see that. I bet it'd just be incredible. The amount of energy is just phew, great stuff. So anyway, my number three is Driven to Tears. Now that's a that's a good pick. Oh, great one. All right, John. Oh, I'm going to stick with the uh, Zenyata Mandata on this one. And this would, this would be my first, uh, probably the first song of the police that I had heard probably on the video. And that would be Don't Stand So Close to Me. Um, I just love the arrangement. I love that swirling keyboard section. Uh, I, I, you know, just, I just, Andy Summers' guitar is great. The drum, I, everything just is great with that song. And it just, that song has always stuck with me. Um, you know, in regards to Andy Summers, uh, I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on, uh, 
and we don't have to do it right now, but I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on Behind the Camel. That is just like a weird song, but almost sounds like it could have been on Pink Floyd The Wall. <laughs> it kind of has that kind of sound feel to it almost like it could have gotten stuck in there somehow but but that i thought the instrumentals on that one were great i mean it, to me that was like a good andy summers album almost but but yeah for me don't stand so close to me that's that's gonna be number three for me yeah mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on the 1986 uh remix or the the mix version i found that a little bit um no. i don't know wishy-washy i'm I don't think I ever listened to it. Uh, yeah. You're not missing anything. I think I've read something about that today that Stuart and Sting were actually, at that time, Stuart Copeland had broken his collarbone, so he couldn't drum. So he was playing drum parts on a Fairlight. And I think Sting was wanting to use drum parts off of St. Clavier. Mm. And so one would put, put one drum track down, and the other would erase it. And I don't know, I guess it caused a lot of problems. Of course, you can imagine Stuart Copeland and Sting going back and forth on it. But I think it's just, I don't even think there's really any real drums on it. I, I think Stuart Copeland won out, though. Yeah. But I don't care for the track at all. Absolutely. And it's disappointing that on the, um, the Greatest Hits album, that's the one, I think they re-recorded it to push this, this Greatest Hits album. And now this is like the, the common go-to for a lot of people without referencing the original version. So that's a bit disappointing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a good track. Um, Reed, what's your pick? All right, so moving on to number three, I'm going to the Synchronicity album. Uh, I think Synchronicity would get my vote as the weirdest multi-million selling album ever. Um, the 80s was a strange time. You had bands like Yes, you know, selling multi-platinum with albums that didn't sound anything like Yes and Genesis suddenly hitting it big, not sounding like Genesis. And then the police had Synchronicity, which again is a weird, weird album, especially if you get off of the songs that were released as singles. Uh, but I'm not because I love the singles more than the deep tracks. You know, call me a poser if you want. But my next uh, favorite track is King of Pain. So by the time synchronicity came out uh the police they had their music polished to a mirror sheen um i think they are one of those bands that every album is tension those guys did not get along uh and but somehow it made their music better although clearly then sting went well screw you guys i can make music on my own um and i guess he can because he's still going but um they were producing fantastic music and they're one of the bands that went out at the absolute top of their game. You know, their follow-up album to synchronicity was guaranteed to sell multi-platinum and it just never happened. So uh, that's pretty intense, but King of pain uh, is a beautiful song. Again, the lyrics are incredibly deep. Uh, well, deep may be the wrong word. They're incredibly effective at describing this guy's inner turmoil and one of the things I love about it is if you just listen, if you if you read the lyrics to somebody, they'd go, oh, man, that's kind of cheesy sounding. You know, I guess I'm always hoping that you'll end this reign, but it's my destiny to be the king of pain. It sounds like a goth wannabe, but he sells it. I, I don't know how just pure charisma in the vocal and the song is fantastic. Nice. I had it on like a, a KTEL collection when i was in anyone remember those ktel records oh, yes. they would just do these oh, greatest hits albums uh and i There'll just be 20 to that tracks song on over one and side over again and, they, yes. and, and just as you're getting into the song it sort of fades oh, you know because they had to cram all those tracks on that one side so yeah king, uh, king of pain that's my number three. Oh, that's a killer song Great one that's good you mean these ktel things yes no. oh, <laughs> well done and you know the and scary thing a, and he the has scary thing right he there. had it just at hand yes <laughs> yeah. is this I mean, possibly these, it's not from new, these are these are from the 70s but yeah i know i know i know them <laughs> i think we've got a future I, episode boys i <laughs> presume we're all about the same age so uh we we all remember 52. the hotel experience i i bet your younger viewers which you hopefully have some uh they're going to be going what the hell are you guys talking about <laughs> 
the Kato record selector. Did you have that in America where you just flip it and it was sort of like uh, the oh. records went into a holder and it flips over like that? I had one when yeah. I was a kid. I had wow. all my no, I never Disneyland had that. records in it. All right. Good stuff. And then all right. I'm derailing this. <laughs> no, no, sorry about right. that. It's all right. <laughs> Put your <laughs> comments down to that one. No, it's good. All right. Um, my number three is Can't Stand Losing You. So um, I think that's a, a killer song. Um, I digress a little bit. I think that um, the guy doesn't commit suicide because there's a line about, um, but my foolish pride. So I think lyrically, you know, you're 17, you head over heels with a girl, you, you break up and it's like the end of the world. We've all gone through that sort of situation when we're teenagers and it really picks up on the melodrama of these sort of small events are actually big events. And this song perfectly encapsulates that. And um, I just like the lyric writing on it. It's, it's kind of, and it's got a bit of dry humor. Um, and um, yeah, just the songwriting and the instrumentation on this song. Um, it's my number three. I think it's a great song. Okay, Grant. Great song. Now we're number two. All right. I'm going with what John went with. I'm going with Don't Stand So Close to Me. Yet another track from 1980s Zanyata Mandata. So I've got three from that same album. Um, exactly what, it's just a great track. I love the way it starts out, has that guitar synth. I think that's a guitar synthesizer that Andy's playing in the beginning that's real low. And then Stuart comes in with the hi-hat. Great production, great song. Just kind of sinister sounding uh again a great side of a great side of an album i don't know that's my uh number two very good all right john all right so my my theme if you haven't figured it out i mean i'm kind of picking like a big track from each album so but for this one this one's always been a favorite for me number two for me uh from ghost in the machine uh i'm going with invisible sun love that tribal uh, beat mm -hmm. i just love the moodiness of that song the uh the lyrics I, again i that tribalness of the of stewart's drumming in there just is a is just it's just intense uh i love some of the guitar lines in that thing um just a, i just love the attitude of that song that, to me that's that was always that's always been a long time favorite for me so i could i can remember the, listening to that hearing that in the 80s on like on the radio and stuff like that and i just thought it was a it was a good song then yeah, yeah. i still 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 love that one now yeah so, love right. it good isn't song. that a Stuart copeland song i think it is. i think that was i think that was just a sting song i think i yeah i don't know <laughs> Man, i think it's just a sting now i'm gonna song. have to look yeah, yeah i would it, it, not even knowing the credits i would guess it's sting that the lyrical content is so sting right yeah guy. Okay, we'll go over to you, Reed, and I'll. I'm getting out the album, and I'm just looking that up, and I'll try right. in. Yep. Well, I am sticking with uh, synchronicity. My number two police song is Synchronicity Two. Now you have to be careful. This the album Synchronicity has two tracks named Synchronicity. There is Synchronicity, and there is Synchronicity Two. Uh, and I don't like the first one very much. The police actually have a lot of songs that I'm not particularly fond of. But Synchronicity 2 is brilliant. Um, and again, one of the weirdest things to ever achieve, I think, mass market popularity, a song about the banality of middle class life in England in the 1980s, uh, juxtaposed with this man's despair envisioned as the Loch Ness Monster coming up from a lake. Uh, and cutting back and forth between the events of this life and this monster is getting closer to the surface. And then at the end, nothing, no payoff whatsoever. You just get to the guy's commute home. On the other side, the monster is approaching the house. Song ends. And um, I thought that was a brilliant choice because it it just builds tension and builds tension and builds tension. And then it just walks away and you're left there holding all of this tension and wondering what's happening. 
Uh, and that's life, right? This guy, he's a wage slave. He's not going to have that tension resolved. He's just going to get up tomorrow and do the exact same thing. Um, and I don't know any other band that would pull it off as well as they did. So yeah. synchronicity too. No, good, good choice. Good choice. And I have to say that the, um, the video clips off that album were stellar. Um, there's a lot of things that just burn in my brain. The, um, the imagery of that one with the candles and he's got the, um, the samurai and chops the candles down. Um, right. That's the king of pain. Then there was one where um, the mad, sort of semi mad Max and um, Sting's got that uh, blonde spiky hair and um, it sort of looks like out of the road warrior. All those sort of sort of film clips off that album, million dollar production. They were like little movies, but um, it, I think that really pushed that album to mega platinum status. And um, Grant, did you say how much... Um, this album had sold it must be close to diamond it's probably their must be their biggest selling album mm. of all time um, i think so i don't yeah no, i didn't i don't know what that is yeah but oh that's a great choice good choice really. yeah but right. it was darkness darkness Stuart copeland copeland song i got okay. just confused but darkness is a great track too there's so, so many there's a, a bit of an honorable mention. We can we can throw that right at the end too. That's my honorable mention. Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Well, my number oh, one. I haven't is, done mine oh, yet. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'll quickly do mine. Number two. No, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Uh, don't stand so close to me. So, um, love that song. I like the original version. A um, lot of tension builds a story. Um, I think it's got the classic the classic uh, police sound. And um, that's my number two. We've got three of those. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, my number one, I think, is the quintessential police song. If you would, some alien came down to the planet and said, what do the police sound like? This is what I would throw at them. And my number one is off Brigada de Blanc, 1979, Message in a Bottle. Um. One of the things I think Rolling Stone ranked it as number 65 on its list of 100 greatest guitar songs of all time. But who doesn't like that riff? A great riff. I remember when Sting played Live Aid, he played Message in a Bottle solo on his Strat. It was wonderful. Yeah. I love that song. However, ever he plays it, I think I've even heard him play it like on like a classical guitar. I don't remember. It's been years, but it was wonderful that way. But it was the first of their five number one singles. It reached number 74 in the United States. And it was the first number five in the UK. Um, I don't know. I think it's the perfect police song. Yeah, it's a killer track. Um, it, even the band likes it. You know, whenever you ask, like they've interviewed Andy Summers, you know, what song you like to play. They always love to play uh, Message in the Bottle. Yeah. It's just got a great feel and there's a lot of energy when they play it live. I and know. I love those drum fills at the end where it's really ramping up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, the um, the drumming of stupid Stuart Copeland um, right at the end. It's phenomenal. Another great performance. It's just incredible. Yeah, it just drives it along. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a great pick. Well done. But there you go. Okay. John, what's your so number one pick? So to piggyback off of Reed uh, from his number two, that would be my number one, Synchronicity 2. Okay. Uh, that video just, like, like, yeah, like you say, Peter, that, that's the video for that song just has burned in my brain from all the times I'd see it on MTV. Um, you know, if, when you listen to the lyrics of the song, you know, sometimes you kind of think, hmm. That came out in 83 and it's 2022. Yeah, not much really different. <laughs> you know, you, you almost do kind of wish for the Loch Ness Monster just to come out of nowhere or something, you know, or King Kong or Godzilla to show up, you know. It's the 2020s, why not? So something weird could happen. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just again, that that punchy, that punchy drumming, the the guitar work, it, it just every uh, and the lyrics, it just really in, in introspectful lyrics uh just yeah I, I i love that i love that song just a just a always have always have i mean message in a bottle is great every little thing she does is magic they're all great songs but for me yeah synchronicity too all the way well done okay that's good 
Reed, what is your number one? And, and I forgot to mention, but since uh, John just brought the song up again, the absolute glee with which Sing, Sting sings, it's a humiliating kick in the crotch. Yep. That just cracks me. I mean, it's not funny, <laughs> right? But it still right. cracks me up. But who doesn't yeah, feel that classic. today, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, yep. Yeah, that's how we all feel. All right. So this is this is another one. As as Grant was describing his reasoning for picking his number one, I was like, oh, are we going to have the number one song? Because when I think of the quintessential police song, the song that if somebody, you know, comes out of lower Moldavia and says, I've heard about the police. Can you you know, what do they sound like? The song I would give them is my number one, and that is Roxanne. I was waiting for somebody to come up with that. <laughs> I know it's kind of a stereotypical pick, but it's such a good song. And again, mm. you know, the the man trying to convince the woman he loves to not prostitute herself. Mm. That's a dark concept. But the song is so upbeat and happy. And what I really love about it is it's lo-fi. If you listen, and I almost exclusively listen to music with headphones these days, there are wrong notes in it. Um, the voices, the way they harmonize is not perfect. They are not 100% on pitch. And that actually adds to the song. It's beautiful. Um, the and if butt I could piano. Only ever, I'm sorry? The butt piano in the beginning of the song is as credited. <laughs> Isn't there a little bit of laughter? Like, oh. You know, at the start of it, it yeah, there's a there is, of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, um, if if I could only take one police song with me to a desert island, it would be that one. Because man, you can sing along to that song and just have a fantastic time. Yeah, I tell you what, Sting does a killer version of this, and I don't know if you lads have ever seen it. It's the Secret Policeman's Other Ball, which was a um, a concert for Amnesty International. Had a lot of British comedians, Monty Python. Um, but Eric Clapton, um, but Sting did a, a, a an acoustic version of that, and it was just beautiful, killer. It's it's stripped back and just on a guitar. It's a, a wonderful song. And uh, there's a a really good documentary about and by Andy Summers. I think it's on Netflix, um, where the, he talks about Roxanne's one of the first songs they wrote. Hmm. Um, okay, interesting. So there's there's a time when you go from being a cover band to okay, it's time we do original material. Yep. And to have that be one of your first ideas is just that tells you this. There's going to be some magic here. Yeah. No. Well done. That's that's a killer song. Alrighty. Oh. Well, my number one. Um, I don't think anyone's picked or somebody may have done a, an honourable mention. It's off the Ghost in the Machine. This song to me is just perfect um, ear candy confection. To me, it's the, the, the most perfect um, police pop song. And it's every little thing she does is magic. I love that song. I love the Calypso feel. It makes me feel good. I listen to that song and it just uplifts me. And um, I just love everything about that song. There's just so much joy in their performance when they record it. And I remember I bought the 45 and I used to crank up the outro because if you listen to the outro of that song, it, it drifts into a different little melody. And um, it looks like Sting is about to sing another song, um, maybe Strangers in the Night or something. And I've always wondered what, you know, what the out, you know, the outro, if if it continued on, what it would actually lead into. But I really love that song. And that's my number one. Um, every little thing she does is magic. So um, maybe we can just do a quick round, Robin, of uh, honourable mentions. Grant, is there any uh, others that were bubbling under that you were sort of, I know you've had your list pretty well for it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I didn't really go into any honourable mentions. I just kind of. Yeah. I mean, there's there's plenty. Yeah. Well, is there I any my a couple of you, in front of me? Is there any you want to quickly just throw? Maybe one or two. Uh, uh, hmm. I do like walking on the moon quite a bit off of Regatta de Blanc, and and I do love that Stuart Copeland song on there. 
does everyone stare? I love that. Um, okay. See if there's anything off of here. Um, nah, I don't really have anything. Just those. That's but cool. I love. I love all of it though. Pretty. Yeah, much. absolutely. Well, that's good. And didn't John, really have anything that was weak. Yep. John, any um, honorable mentions? Uh, as far as others, um, I really like Truth Hits Everybody. Uh, I like. I thought that was a. I like kind of the the lyrics again just i i thought the way he, what he was saying in there i thought that was a good that was a strong track uh the bed's too big without you i thought was also a good track yep uh of course driven to tears voices in my head i thought those were great tracks um i uh i i know two songs that i would not mention as honorable mentions although one i like and one i can't stand uh I, I actually I actually love the silliness of Be My Girl Sally. Don't ask me why. I just think that is just the oh. dumbest song ever, but it's it's such a silly song. I'm but I kind of like it. <laughs> but if there was ever a song I, I I that I could not listen to, it, that would definitely not make my top five. I mother, no, mother, uh, no, yeah. no, 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 mother. Yeah. yeah, I could do with uh -uh. ever without hearing that again. <laughs> no. That's that's what I got. Okay, cool. And Reed, any honorable mentions? Putting everyone on the spot here. Sorry. Well, most of the time, um, I said the the sing or the songs I like best were their singles, right? Um, the ones that you would hear on the radio or see on MTV. But the the only thing that hasn't been mentioned, like "Next to You," was a song that I considered. Um, but again, off of Outlandos, the more so lonely. That's a good song. Another yeah. good upbeat, you know, Outlandos the more is their least complex music, but it's very compelling. It has a lot of energy and it still has sparks of brilliance, uh, mm. especially in the lyrical content. Uh, yep. And again, matching that dark lyrical content with those beautiful, happy songs, which I think is the magic of the police. But so. Now, that's that's a really good choice. Um... I think we've uh, lost Reed. We'll just continue on. Um, frozen. Yeah. So in respect of my honourable mentions, um, Message in a Bottle, um, that's just a killer track. And also Roxanne, um, one of those two, um, that could have easily snuck into my top five. So there you have it. Now, um, I've done a tally up and it's just been a very diverse range. Um, so there hasn't been too many that have had duplications so it's been a very wide range um don't stand so close to me that's the um the pick that uh i think three of us got and um that's the 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 popular choice with us four so there you go so there you have it um that's been really enjoyable doing this little chat we'll do it again soon guys so um viewers put your comments um subscribe to rock day dream nation and um yeah just put your comments down tell me what your favorite police songs are and um we'll catch up with you really soon okay cheers